As much as we want to believe that all of our favorite movies dominated in the box office when they were initially released, the truth is that many of them suffered humiliating defeats to, um, less than classic movies. Here are 12 amazing movies that lost their opening weekends to utter trash. Number 1. It's hard to imagine a time when Shaun of the Dead didn't exist. It's now immortalized in an endless series of t-shirts, keychains, and Funko Pops that you just kinda put on a shelf and forget about. But in opening weekend, it was trounced by Katie Holmes' rom-com First Daughter, a movie that would be utterly forgotten to time if not for the inexplicable fact that it was directed by Forrest Whitaker. Number 2. Looper was such a nuanced, strange, and smart sci-fi movie that it earned Ryan Johnson the role of directing Star Wars The Last Jedi. It's lucky that he was noticed at all, considering Adam Sandler's vampire cartoon Hotel Transylvania slithered into existence with twice the box office gross. Number 3. Labyrinth is a cultural touchstone, and David Bowie's performance as the Goblin King defined the shape of the 80s as clearly as Bowie's costume defined the shape of… well… Even still, the movie only made a fraction of the box office of Karate Kid Part 2, a sorrowfully forgettable sequel to a different 80s gem. Number 4. South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut marked the undeniable cementing of Trey Parker and Matt Stone's legacy in pop culture. It defined a young generation with razor-sharp satire hidden amidst floppy dick jokes. But another cultural tour de force, Will Smith, was riding the wave of relevance into his first major wipeout, Wild Wild West. You could debate the virtues of the Wild Wild West rap versus Uncle F***er all day long, but it won't change the fact that Wild Wild West pulled in twice the gross. Number 5. Laika's Kubo and the Two Strings is a landmark achievement in stop-motion animation, filled with breathtaking visuals and a powerful message about loss and acceptance. War Dogs is a movie that the person in the seat next to you watches on an airplane. Number 6. Shane Black's The Nice Guys is a lovely little 70s throwback, and maybe most impressive about it is that it's a totally original release not based on an existing property or a remake. But by box office numbers, it seems that rather than seeing a new idea, movie-going audiences would prefer watching an animated movie based on a 7-year-old iPhone game by a factor of nearly 4 to 1. Number 7. The Little Mermaid is an absolute classic. You'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who'd debate that. At the same time, Look Who's Talking, a movie about Bruce Willis as a talking baby, beat it out. If it makes you feel any better, the insipid sequel, Look Who's Talking 2, was beat by Home Alone's fifth straight week at number one. Number eight, we're lucky to have gotten Pacific Rim at all. Guillermo del Toro's passion project that vividly brought to life anime and Japanese kaiju sentai stylings on a scale that we've never seen. Still, you can't help but groan that it was beat out by Adam Sandler's Turd Fest, Grown Ups 2, a movie whose primary attraction is Kevin James falling off a rope swing. Number 9. Children of Men was released to unrivaled praise, being heralded as the best sci-fi movie in years. But Children of Men couldn't beat out actual children dragging their parents to see Ben Stiller's Night at the Museum. Number 10. Surprisingly clever, imaginatively violent, and with some of the most inventive uses of the third dimension in modern movie history, Dread 3D was a slam dunk. However, twice as many people paid to see House at the End of the Street, which is Jessica Lawrence's worst rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes. And that includes Drillbit Taylor. Number 11. Fury Road was a fresh breath of shiny chrome for the action movie genre, but for as much buzz as it made, it still trailed miserably behind the mediocre sequel to Pitch Perfect. Number 12. Office Space is a modern classic that firmly established Mike Judge as an intelligent icon in comedy beyond just Beavis and Butthead. Its subtle and subversive comedy has had lasting appeal, but at the time, it lagged behind the groan-worthy Nicolas Cage movie 8mm. It also pulled weak numbers against Brendan Fraser's middling rom-com Blast from the Past. Well, it could at least beat out megastar Jeff Daniels and Christopher Lloyd's Disney picture My Favorite Martian, right? Wrong. Oh, oh wrong, 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 wrong. Oh my god. So wrong. So 